Hey there art nerds, I have another watercolor tutorial for you guys today and this one is really fun. We're going to be using neon and granulating pigments to create this magical watercolor illustration. So the materials you're absolutely going to need for this and you can use whatever watercolors you wish but I would recommend some nice neon watercolors, Kusakabe makes some fun ones, and some granulating watercolors. Daniel Smith makes some of the ones that I'm going to use in this tutorial today. This is a start to finish watercolor tutorial, which means we're also going to include the sketch stage of this. I am sketching on Magnani 1404 Toscana watercolor paper. This is a block bound watercolor round that I reviewed not too long ago. And I am sketching using HB graphite pretty lightly. I drew a crosshair just to kind of get my placement and I want a more central composition. And it's going to be a small girl uh, holding magical bubbles, sending magical bubbles out of her hand, that sort of thing. I really was thinking more about the vibe and the emotion of this piece rather than what uh, she's actually holding. And this is heavily influenced by the Moody Blues album cover where you've got the old man and the kid and the old man is holding like this glowing crystal. I just remember looking at that cover as a kid and thinking that was super cool and I really wanted to know their backstory. So I'm kind of taking those emotions and those feelings and using that in this fairly simple little illustration. So generally when I'm drawing, I try to get the placement down first. I try to get everything kind of sketched in before I really start refining any details. If you guys were paying attention, you noticed I had a post-it note with a thumbnail sketch of what I had in mind just to kind of convey that to myself so I wouldn't have to try to remember it. Doing thumbnails is a great way to get your ideas down so that they're not distracting you all day long and you can wait until you can actually focus on getting them done. This is particularly helpful for traditional media artists. It allows you to find just just the right materials for that idea that you're so excited about. So with this illustration, I wanted a lot of glow. I wanted a lot of color. I really wanted to experiment with quite a few things. So to help convey that a lot of color, I'm inking it with my Tombow Furunosuke colored brush pens. These are alcohol safe and waterproof. They are some of my favorite brush pens. Those of you who watch my tutorials know I really love these. We have no partnership, but I use the heck out of these brush pins. They are truly great. And um, this is kind of just a preliminary inking. After I've watercolored it, I may decide to go back and change some of the colors, but this is kind of giving me an idea of what I want to use. And I'm inking the bubbles first, and I'm inking them in multiple colors. We've got some neon colors to indicate the light and the brightness of these magical bubbles. And then we've got some darker regular colors just to add in a two-tone effect and to add in some shading. And as you guys can see, I'm kind of rotating the colors as I go because I want to make sure I have a good mix of all the colors here in this illustration. Something I really love about these kind of start to finish tutorials is it gives me a chance to show you guys my thought process and my development process. And I hope that makes art a little bit more accessible to more people so that you guys can see it doesn't just come out of the ether fully conceived. There's a lot of thought going into it and a lot of refining that goes in even as I'm sketching and even as I'm inking. Every step of the way, there's a chance to kind of adjust the idea and to really think about it. And really, I make my best Best art when times are calm, when things are good. Uh, the, there's a fallacy that artists make their best art during strife. They might make very emotional art during strife, but generally if I'm making art that I feel is really well done and beautiful to look at and enjoyable, I really need that mental space to be able to think and relax and actually spend that time on the piece instead of being worried about everything else that's going on. So for her skin, I'm using a brown. So usually with my alcohol marker pieces that are more anime inspired and have more kind of candy pop colors going on, I would use pinks to ink the skin tone, especially for lighter skin people. But for a watercolor illustration, even though I'm going to be using a lot of color and a lot of neons, I wanted something softer and a little bit more old fashioned feeling. So I'm using a brown for this. I do wish that Tombow would release more colors in their Furunose 
Yonosuke line, especially for us US customers, some pastels would be very helpful, as well as maybe some muted colors. Please, Tombo, if you're listening, I've begged you before, I will beg you again. I'm also inking her hair with brown because at this point in time, I had some ideas for what I wanted her hair color to be. I was kind of torn between giving her like a blondish cream color or going with a blue. And one of the nice things about this is that even though I'm inking with brown right now, I can always re-ink it or allow the watercolors to kind of influence what the line art looks like. So Magnani's 1404 Toscano paper is a cold press cut rag watercolor paper. It is block bound, so that means it's already stretched for us. We don't have to stretch this illustration. And it doesn't have a particularly assertive surface texture, which makes it very easy to ink on. Like for example, Shizen, which has a very assertive surface texture, especially for the cold press, can be very challenging to ink on with these smaller brush nibs. This is very mild mannered. It's somewhere in between um, a good cold press texture and a hot press texture. And while hot press is an absolute delight to ink on, I don't always like how hot press papers handle massive amounts of water. And for this illustration, we are really going to be throwing a lot of water at this paper. So I not only wanted a block bound paper that could handle a lot of water, but I wanted a surface texture that was also very receptive to a lot of water as well. So I allowed my inks to dry at least 24 hours before I erased them with a a soft white vinyl eraser. I scanned my inks to share on Patreon and now I'm using my neon color palette. I call this my Naomi palette based off of one of the two main characters of my comic, Seven Inch Kara. So these are colors that Naomi wears a lot and I'm going for really fun saturated poppy colors that really give this implication, this indication of a light source and beautiful colored light. And this isn't going to necessarily be immediately visible when we finish the piece, but this this is going to tone the piece. It's going to tone her hair. It's going to tone her skin. So it's going to provide a lot of really fun under color that's going to influence our colors. Now I'm using a little bit of paper towel to just pick some of that color out of the bubbles. I opted not to mask them in this instance because I want that softer glowy di diffusion that it's difficult to get that with masking fluid, but it's much easier to get it by just lifting some of the color out while the color is still wet. And I'm going in and I'm kind of just adding in additional colors, like I'm adding in some small blue around the edges. I'm kind of adjusting where our colors are. And my main color palette for this part would be a cool yellow, a really vibrant orange, a little bit of red, a couple of different hot pinks, a nice warm red violet, and then our small blue. And I'm kind of just going over it again and again, adjusting the color, building up the color, building up that glow effect, just kind of using my best judgment. So one of the things I don't necessarily like about straightforward step-by-step-by-step -step -step watercolor tutorials is there's a lot of your own judgment that should go into painting and what you think looks good. And I really wanna encourage you guys to develop an eye and to develop your own taste. And if at any point during one of my tutorials, you're like, you know what, I am super happy with how it looks. I don't need to add anything more then you should feel free to take that detour and explore those options. I don't want you to feel pressured into completing the piece exactly the way I completed it, just because that's the way I did it. So I had allowed it to dry fully. I kind of evaluated my colors and decided that I needed some more colors. So we've got our second layer of color going on now. And I'm mostly just reestablishing the colors that I initially put down, but I also added in this really beautiful, almost fire engine red. It's one of the Kusakabe watercolors. And I haven't talked about Kusakabe a whole lot here on the channel, mostly because most of what I use them for are these fun sort of neon colors. And they're a little bit harder to get in the US. Uh, I don't know of any brick and mortar stores that sell them. So I order them online when I do order them. And I also picked up a bunch when I went to Japan back in 2018. And I'm sadly kind of running through my stock and I need to replenish it. So as it dries, I'm also adding in some streaks of color because I have my dehumidifier on. So some of these areas have dried faster than others. And this gives us a really interesting kind of soft technique where some of the lines are harsher and then some of them are wet as they're going into the areas that are still kind of wet. I 
love these little hyperlapse segments because you can really see the paint drying in live action. So next, now that this is dried, I'm going to start painting in the individual little magic bubbles, and then I'm going to mask those off so we can focus on painting the rest of the illustration. There's nothing particularly special about what I'm doing here, other than I'm trying to keep the colors fairly pastel. I'm painting the rims of the bubbles, so the exterior of the bubbles, and then I'm using a little bit of clean water to blend that out so we get this soft sort of glowy transition effect. Once I've finished painting in the bubbles and they've had a chance to fully dry, I'm using removable, slightly tinted Windsor & Newton masking fluid. I've poured it off into a dinky dip and I'm using a synthetic watercolor brush to apply it to my bubbles. I'm also flicking the masking fluid onto the background to kind of create a little bit of randomness and to give us some smaller bubbles. We did all this underpainting and that's going to protect some of the underpainting so it'd still be visible. Now I've got some beautiful super granulating colors from Daniel Smith and I wanted to test out a few just to figure out which would be a good fit for this illustration so you guys see me doing some swatches here so I can figure out exactly which ones would work and which ones I want to go with. I'm also going to make it a little bit easier for me to use these by adding them to half pans and allowing them to dry fully. That's gonna allow me to better control that super granulation. So I wanna start working on creating some shadow and some depth. So I'm using Moon Glow for a grise technique on top of all of our neons. And what's really cool about Moon Glow is it's a color that splits out into a green and to an, into a purple. Both of them are fairly soft and beautiful and I thought they would really work well for adding some shadow and adding some drama to our girl's face and her hair. And we're also really working on establishing not just the lighting, but also the contrast and a sense of depth. So I find that doing grise, doing this sort of shadow underpainting allows me to figure out where the shadows are gonna go earlier on. It allows me to just kind of focus on those shadows so that I can create more dramatic watercolor illustrations. And I also find that it's a little bit easier for me to do these sort of super granulating grise, grise techniques early on in the watercolor illustration rather than trying to glaze them on top of my almost finished watercolor illustration. I don't have as many problems with these very light thin washes sort of reactivating the undercolors and turning everything to mud. For this particular grise technique, I'm working in two ways. I'm working in layers and I'm also working in saturation. And I'm blending out the more saturated secondary layers so that we can get that kind of soft glow effect while still also achieving the depth that we need for our shadows and for our areas that are blocked from the light. And for this illustration, I want it to look like she's kind of melting into the darkness, fading into the darkness. So there's some areas that are going to be left unrendered and we're going to fill that in later with our granulating black.
I thought in the instance with this illustration that it would be easier for me to focus on doing the grise on her first and then creating the background or at least a starting on the background. So I'm working with the most saturated version of our Moon Glow Grise wash and I'm just kind of applying it on top of our background. And one of the things I really love about these super granulating colors is that you can actually see a lot of the color influence from the prior layers. So there's still a lot of that beautiful neon that's still visible. And I'm going to progressively work it more saturated, wet into wet so that we can really achieve that glow technique. And by the end of this illustration, there's gonna be a lot of lunar black, a lot of PBK 11 on the background, kind of creating that misty, dark environment. In fact, at this point, I think I've started to add in Lunar Violet, which includes Lunar Black with a little bit of purple. Now, I know there's been a lot of talk about how super granulating colors, particularly the Supervision ones, are not particularly light fast. So I do want to point out that this is an illustration for my own enjoyment. Most of the work I do is either intended to be sold as a one-off, and I do try to disclose to my customers when we've used fugitive pigments. But in general, a lot of my work is done for reproduction. So I'm going to scan it and then maybe sell stickers of it. So I did want to disclose that for those of you who might be interested in using these sort of pigments for art that you're selling. I do think you should disclose that to your customers. I'm not one of those who say never ever sell something made with fugitive art materials. I mean, I sell alcohol marker commissions as well, but I do try to be honest with my customers when we have used those kind of fugitive pigments so that they can display the art accordingly. Accordingly. So now I'm using our PBK 11, our lunar black, and I'm dabbing it into the background so that we can start to kind of get this sort of grittiness that to me st starts to sort of feel almost magical in conjunction with the color palette that we've used. And if you're interested in more tutorials that utilize these sort of watercolors, I actually have a really fun New Year's tutorial that I shared with my amazing art nerds over on Patreon that demonstrates how to use alcohol markers with these sort of super granulating watercolors and I think it's really cool I shared some shorts of that down in my <laughs> shorts section so if you guys want to get a preview for that you definitely can so for painting the girl herself it's actually pretty simple it's pretty standard to how I generally go about watercoloring I'm going to keep it very light and simple for this illustration because we've already done so much work with the super granulating colors and I'm really going to try to focus on creating glow effects and glow techniques and really just push that magical glow so that you guys can really feel that. So generally towards the bottom of her face, the part that's really lit by the majority of our glowing bubbles, I'm going to be relifting that out with a clean paper towel while it's still wet. I'm gonna work on really establishing her skin tone, mostly in the shadows. So the upper part of her face, the bottom parts of her arms, that sort of thing. I'm dabbing in a little bit of really watered down scarlet to start creating the blush on her fingertips, her elbows, the palms of her hands, her nose, her cheeks, her eyelids, the beneath her eyebrows and the interiors of her ears. And I also want to point out that this video has been time lapsed at least 8x in many parts. I don't paint this fast and it did take me a few days to paint this illustration. I spent one day working on that neon background and allowing it to dry. Another day working on the grise techniques and allowing that to dry. And then another day painting her and then kind of adding in the final detail. So art takes time and please be patient with yourself. Often when we're sharing art on YouTube, it's been edited in such a way that it accommodates YouTube and the needs of YouTube and the interests of people who are watching the videos rather than the needs of people who are actually interested in learning how to paint. So that's why I try to disclose how long it takes when I can remember how long it takes with you guys because I want to normalize that art takes time and I want you guys to feel like it's okay to be patient with yourself and that you don't have to just pump art out. So you guys can see I'm working on kind of blending the skin tones so that we get that glow effect. I did want to establish her skin tone there. I didn't want it to just be like the yellow from the neon. 
So um, it's kind of a nice balancing act working in between. And I also am adding in the blush color wet into wet. And that's something else that tends to get edited out is the dry times. It can be difficult to tell when someone has added something while the paper is still wet or if they've allowed the paper to dry fully and then they're adding it. So I try to, when I can, I try to disclose that as well too because I've found that learning how to work with both has really helped me up my watercolor game. And it's something that's not readily apparent from written tutorials or from books or from YouTube tutorials. So I do think it's good to point that out. So I wasn't really able to get her skin tone as saturated as I wanted from the mix. I think I was using Burnt Sienna really watered down for her base skin tone. So now I'm working with Burnt Sienna in a much more saturated form so that I can really start building up the contrast that I want. I used a very light ultramarine blue for her eyes because I wanted to, it to have this kind of mystic sort of effect. I wanted it to really reflect the glow from the bubbles that she's holding. And a lot of what I'm doing at this point is just kind of establishing something, going back and tightening it up, establishing it some more. I'm also using a red violet to kind of start finessing the areas on her that would be more in shadow. So she's wearing um, kind of a little capelet and I decided to go with red violet for that so that it blended in with the background while still being somewhat visible to you guys, the viewers. And it's a granulating red violet. It's one of the Daniel Smith ones. It could be Rose of Ultramarine. Um, not super sure off the top of my head though. And I wanted it to kind of mesh in and blend in with the background so that there's a softer transition between our girl and the background. What I really wanted to pop for you guys would be her face and the glowing bubbles that she's holding. So everything I'm doing at this point is kind of in service to really pushing that So for her hair color, I finally decided to go with a really light blue color. And that's kind of where I made my mistake because I think I ended up overworking it a little bit. I really love how you can see all the neons through her hair color. And I think a single light glaze of that just to kind of establish the color would have been a good way to go. I'm adding in a little bit of vertiver blue, which is also kind of a more opaque pastel blue. I think this is Holbein's vertiver blue. And that's another, it's a beautiful color, but that's another area where I feel like I kind of detracted from the piece that I'm working on because we had such a beautiful neon effect going on with her hair. And that's something I think I'd like to explore again in the future and see if I can really push that effect. But uh, by adding all this additional blue on top of it, it does help me establish a little bit more drama and it does kind of help pull her from the background. But we lose one of the cooler things that's going on with this piece. So that's definitely something I wanna go back and explore in the future. And it kind of reminds me of that Fireflies illustration I did earlier in the year where Kara and Tanner from my comic, Seven Inch Kara, are laying in the tall grass and kind of looking at the fireflies. And I did all this beautiful colored underpainting and then I did like a grise of a phthalo blue to start establishing the cool colors on the grass. And that looked really cool and magical. And then I painted as normal on top of it and I just lost so much of that magic. And I think I've been trying to kind of pull back on my painting so I'm not over painting as much, but I feel like I really need to push the beautiful colored underlayer tones and just kind of let that speak for itself a little bit more. That said, I am pleased with how her hair turned out. Um, I think it. I think as it dries, you do start to see more of those neon undercolors and it works a little bit better and it definitely adds more depth to the piece than just leaving it neon would have done. But I think both are viable ways to go. And that's one of the reasons I say, if you guys are following along, painting your own stuff using techniques I'm demonstrating in one of my tutorials, please feel free to just drive off the path and do your own thing. So at this point, I realized I really wanted more contrast to pop her from the background. So I believe I'm using a, it's either lunar violet or it's just plain old lunar black to create more depth and to kind of create more contrast between the girl 
and the background. And I'm going in, I've mixed in some regular black in with the lunar black as well, because while I love lunar black and I think the granulation it offers is so cool, it doesn't have as much coverage as I probably wanted for this. And now I'm just going like straight in, straight from the tube with lunar black because I just wasn't getting the depth that I wanted. <laughs> allowed my background layers to dry fully so that I could come back to it with fresh eyes and really evaluate what needs to be tweaked. So I decided I wanted to add some more drama and depth to her face. So I'm adding in, I'm like tightening up those shadows on her face using Burnt Sienna. And I'm also adding more of the blush color to her eyes and cheeks just to kind of really push that sort of magical feel. I'm also adding some more depth to her hair. So if you guys enjoy watercolor tutorials like this one, I've got a bunch of great watercolor tutorials here on the channel. I've also got some great beginner watercolor tutorials that I think you guys will really enjoy. So make sure you check the cards as well as the description for more great watercolor resources. Once everything had a chance to dry fully, and this is one of the tricks to masking fluid, it's got to be fully dry. I'm using a masking fluid pickup to remove the masking fluid from the paper. And I know some people can use their fingers to do that, but I seem to have really, really dry hands. So I have the best luck with a masking fluid pickup like this. And I also have the fewest amount of tears using a pickup like this one. It does take some patience, but you guys can get these almost anywhere from Michael's to even hobby shops. I was at Hub Hobby, which is a model store, and they sell these because they're used in model making as well. So these are pretty common. You just got to kind of look for them. I think I've even purchased them in the automotive section before because they're used in like pinstriping and detailing. So once I've removed the masking fluid, I can go in and kind of adjust the bubbles, add some more neon, add some more color, and just kind of further those glow effects. By reserving these areas earlier on, I was able to put to paint much more quickly than if I was trying to paint around those itty bitty little circles. I almost feel like it wouldn't be one of my watercolor illustrations if I didn't do some splatter effects. So I'm using the neons to kind of create a little bit more glow and a little bit more magic by doing a little bit of splatter. And they are gonna dry not quite as obvious and not quite as opaque. And then we're nearing the end. You can tell because I've pulled out the white gouache and I'm going to use this to add so many highlights, so much rim lighting, so much glow for these sort of really atmospheric illustrations. Pulling out the white gouache is almost the best part because that's when you can really pull the illustration together. I want to take a moment before we're done with this illustration to thank my amazing art nerds on Patreon for their support over the years. Thank you guys so much for the encouragement that you guys have provided. If you join me on Patreon, not only will you get early access to videos like this one, but I've been trying to up my backer exclusive tutorials, especially now that I'm teaching more. I've got lots of cool goodies to share with you guys and the funds from my Patreon go towards buying the art supplies that I review here on the channel. So it's a great way to help ensure that I continue to share reviews and tutorials like this one. So once my gouache dried after doing some splatter effect, I'm going back in and I'm re-inking it for contrast and clarity because when we're using watercolors, sometimes they can add some opacity on top of our inked line art and that can kind of make it feel dull, cloudy, muddy, not as exciting as it should be. So a little bit of careful re-inking can re-up that contrast, can clarify some lines and can add some delineation and some detail. And I'm making sure to do that, particularly on her face and on her hair just to really clean things up. And I love how you can still see a lot of that hot pink through all the blues of her hair. To me, it really feels magical. It's such a pretty technique. And it's one that I hope you guys will try as well because it's really not difficult. It doesn't require a whole lot of skill, but it does require some patience. And patience is something that you can have on any kind of art supply budget. So I'm also going in with a little bit of watercolor pencil just to add in some softer 
highlights, especially to her hair to lighten some areas up and just to make it look a little bit more glowy. And there we have it, the finished watercolor illustration. What do you guys think of this one? I love how this one turned out. There's a lot of techniques that I used in this one that I'm gonna keep playing with. I hope you guys will try out some of the techniques that I talked about in this tutorial as well. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and painting along with me. If you're new here, hi, welcome. It would really mean the world to me if you enjoyed this video, if you hit the like button and considered subscribing. And if you are subscribing, do me a huge favor, take a moment and hit that bell notification and let YouTube know that you wanna hear more from me when I update. A huge thanks once again to my amazing, phenomenal patrons on Patreon. You guys make this possible. Thank you guys so much. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and hopefully this helps you guys make art a habit. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.